Hi, everyone. Thanks so very much for joining us for Facebook Live with the elected district attorney in Santa Clara County, Jeff Rosen. As you may have seen, and if you haven't already had an opportunity to be informed, there have been a significant amount in the increase of hate crimes towards the Asian Pacific Islander community. Unfortunately, this is not a new phenomenon, but rather one that we see this highlighted and the heightening aspect with respect to the community and recognizing these issues. Of course, with the advent of social media, we've seen that it's hard to not see and hard not to look away. Uh, but I think we're left with this fundamental question about what can our communities do in tackling the increase of hate crimes collectively? Of course, there are a number of different solutions, but what are some of the options that we have at our, at our disposal as public representatives, as community members, and as family members? Of course, it should go uh, well noticed that as we are having this conversation in the state of California, we just recognized that of Black History Month. And of course, you cannot talk about the Asian American experience without recognizing the shoulders that we stand on with respect to the civil rights and social justice movements. Uh, so having said that, let's get into uh, the conversation. Uh, District Attorney Rosen, thank you very much for joining us and, and the time to have this discussion. And I know that you've also dedicated significant amount of people power and resources, human resources in tackling this issue. So we're grateful for the time that you provided us. A pleasure to be with you. So about the notion of a number of conversations with respect to the increase in crimes towards the Asian Pacific Islander community, is this real? Is this supported by data? Uh, absolutely, yeah, it is supported by data. Uh, the number of incidents, the number of hate incidents uh, against Asian Americans has been steadily rising for a year now. Uh, and there are multiple groups that have been reporting this increase, including one called the Stop AAPI Hate Project, uh, Hate Reporting Project. Uh, even the United Nations has also issued reports last spring documenting a spike in anti uh, Asian American Pacific Islander crimes committed against those groups. So just at a, at a data level, it, at a macro level, we've definitely seen this increase. And then more specifically, specific horrible examples right here in the Bay Area, which of course we think of as a, a bastion of diversity and, and respect and, and welcoming of, of everyone. Uh, but you know, we've seen uh, in San Francisco recently an, 85, an 84 year old Thai man uh, was brutally attacked. Uh, days later, a 91-year-old uh, Asian American man in Oakland uh, was attacked. And in my own office in Santa Clara County in March of last year, uh, we had a, a terrible incident where uh, a man saw an Asian American couple in a grocery store in, in San Jose. And this was right around the time that we were learning about COVID and the coronavirus. And we had some rhetoric coming out of Washington DC at that time, calling this the Wuhan virus and the China virus. And this kind of whistling was heard by, by some people. And anyway, this, this man threatened this Asian American couple, said a number of terrible things to them. And then on top of that, uh, made his, his hand into uh, an image of a gun and said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you Chinese uh, MFers and made it look like he was shooting them. Uh, someone called the police, thankfully, and uh, then this person resisted the police and uh, we've charged that as a, as a hate crime. And the prosecutor that's handling that particular case is Deputy District Attorney Aule Kianursi. And I mention that only because she's a very senior and experienced prosecutor in our office. And some people may be aware that she is the prosecutor who convicted the Stanford swimmer, Brock Turner, for uh, raping Chanel Miller behind a dumpster at Stanford University. So we take uh, hate crimes against against anyone, against Asians, against Blacks, against members of our LGBT community, against uh, Muslims, very seriously. And so that's why I assigned this case to her. Well, I appreciate the recognition of the level of severity in taking hate crimes seriously. Uh, but what is it that of your actual job? For those who may not be familiar with what a, an elected district attorney is, what is the fundamentals to your job and why is that relevant to this conversation on hate crimes? Sure. Well, the 
the, the mission of the district attorney's office is to vigorously pursue justice in a way that's fair and treats everyone equally and with respect. So we prosecute uh, all the different kinds of crimes that are committed, particularly violent crimes. Hate crimes are a, a special kind of crime. Uh, the legislature in California a few decades ago passed a hate crime law, which allows for an enhancement against an individual who commits a crime against a person motivated in whole or in part because of that victim's perceived ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, uh, religious background. And it's very important because a hate crime, in my view as the DA, is really a crime against three. Number one, it's a crime against that particular victim. So in the cases we're talking about, that those particular Asian Americans who were attacked because of their ethnicity. Secondly, of course, it's a crime against uh, everyone in that community, everyone in the Asian American community. And certainly I know that crimes like these reverberate throughout an ethnic community. When one member of a community is singled out because of their, their race or their ethnicity, all the other people in that community feel that. People talk about it and it leads to, to a sense of, of fear and unease. And then third, a hate crime, frankly, is a crime against all of us as Americans because this country is founded on the idea that everyone should be treated equally and with respect. Those are our ideals as expressed in our constitution and in the amendments to our constitution. Obviously, we don't always live up to those ideals, but a hate crime is a way of specifically calling out this kind of uh, bigoted criminal conduct and giving it extra, extra importance. And the, the last piece I would just say about hate crimes is there something very unusual in the penal code about them, which is this. When someone is convicted of a hate crime and the judge is looking to sentence that person, the judge is specifically encouraged to, uh, to consider the harm that was done, not just to that particular victim, but to that whole ethnic community and to try a restorative justice approach in that it's encouraged for that defendant in addition to jail time, if that's what the person gets, also to do community service work specifically with organizations that serve that ethnic community to try to educate this person uh, away from their bigotry. So in the cases that we've talked about, uh, when these individuals are convicted, in addition to, to jail or prison time, I can certainly see a judge saying, I'd like you to volunteer now for 100 hours at Aki, Asian Americans for Community Involvement, to learn more about that community and to understand them so that you won't be bigoted in the future. So what I'm hearing you say is that it is your job to enforce the laws as the top law enforcement officer in Santa Clara County, and that there are the same equivalents throughout the various counties in the state of California, but that you've taken an additional approach, which is to look at that restorative justice and not just simply throw away the key, so to speak, and be to have this uh, sense, this notion of tough on crime, but also help to be informed, be educated on other communities as it relates to the, the, the type of activity that they uh, were apprehended for. I, that, that, that's correct, Assembly Member. I think what we all want to see after someone commits a hate crime like this against Asian Americans is we want to see that person held appropriately accountable so that everyone in the community knows, everyone in the, in the society knows this is wrong, you cannot do this. And then we also want to see some steps taken so that this person doesn't commit crimes like this in the future and gain some kind of understanding. Because as the DA, one of the ways that I fight crime is to prosecute people and to, if necessary, send them to jail or prison. But I'm always looking for other ways to also reduce crime from happening in the first place. And so that's why I've taken this, this approach when it comes to hate crimes. It's why I also, you know, shortly after this pandemic happened in March, and I started to hear of hate incidents against Asian Americans. You know, Santa Clara County is home to 37% of our population are Asian Americans or Pacific Islanders. And when I started to hear about these hate instances, 
I wanted to do something to send a message to our whole community that we don't tolerate this, that we have a very diverse community and we like that and we welcome it. And so I put out a, a one minute PSA with members of the DA's office from different ethnicities, really sending the message that if you attack one person based on their race or ethnicity or gender or other protected status, then you, you've attacked all of us in this community. And one of the things that we're, I'm very proud of in our DA's office is we have such a, a diverse office. And I would add for those who've seen the, the video, a lot of good looking camera ready prosecutors. So what I'm hearing you say is with respect to PSAs, also known as these public service announcements, these videos to address and inform the community, whether it be a 30 second quick uh, clip uh, to address the level of severity that your office takes this seriously, uh, but that you also want to be proactive, not simply just reactive, because I would imagine that much of the job is just reacting uh, to the issues that you see, but you've taken it upon yourself and also with your team uh, who represents a wide variety of array of different backgrounds and top brass leadership, but to be able to articulate why this is important. Because I think part of the challenge that we see is that there's a, a significant amount of underreporting within communities, specifically that of the Asian Pacific Islander community. Is that something that you saw statistically? Absolutely. We know that there is tremendous underreporting of hate crimes in the Asian American and Pacific Islander community and other ethnic communities. And there are multiple studies that have shown us this. Now, we, we understand why there's underreporting because somebody who is attacked because of their, their gender or their ethnicity, or th the first thing they're thinking of is not, oh, I wanna tell the police and I wanna tell everybody about this. They feel shame, um, they are upset, they don't know if anyone will listen to them or take it seriously. and. Right, they're afraid maybe if they, rep they might think if I report this to the police, they won't care and nothing will happen. And so it's like a double whammy. And so part of putting out this PSA where we talked about how, you know, attacking one person based on, the, we said, this is not, this virus is not a Chinese virus. It's not an Italian virus. It's viruses aren't like that. Uh, but part of the reason we we're putting this out was one, to send a message to people that are would-be perpetrators that we don't tolerate this. Uh, number two, to send a message to specifically the Asian American community that we see you, we know this is happening, and we want to help you. So part of what I was trying to say is I know there's underreporting, but I want you to report this. And so that's that's part of why I sent out this video was to get people to report these instances to the police. And then of course, third, we put this PSA out to say to our whole community, Asian, white, black, Hispanic, Jewish, whatever, that this is wrong. This is not who we are. This is not what our values are. And so I, I really wanna encourage people to report hate instances when they happen, even if we can't charge the conduct as a crime, the police will take it seriously and they will talk to the perpetrator. And whether or not we can file it as a crime is one issue. But just think for a moment about the idea of a police officer having a conversation with someone who made some derogatory remark about Asian Americans. It sends a message from law enforcement to that person, this is not tolerated. This is, we don't accept this in our society. You know, it's coming from an authority figure, a police officer. So I certainly want to encourage uh, everyone, specifically in the Asian American community, if you see something like this happening, please report it to the police. Now, District Attorney Rosen, uh, I understand that there are 58 counties in, in the state of California. Are there 58 district attorneys? Yes, uh, each, each county has an elected district attorney. And so given that, um, I have a point of personal privilege that I think we're very lucky in Santa Clara County to have someone like yourselves recognizing the importance of diversity, not just for the tokenism sake, but it's really being proactive and engaging to the community to ensure that we have a sense of trust and respect with law enforcement, especially with a community that frankly will feel like unless there is a problem, we really don't want to engage with members of law enforcement, but uh, that's something that I think we are trying to grapple with right now, which is that the question of 
what do we do? As we are talking to you as an elected district attorney and myself as a state legislator, we're grappled with what do we do to tackle these issues? We have a number of laws on the books, a uh, question about whether or not to enforce them. We also want to best understand if we have the data to support the resources that we get uh, mandated from the state. What are some other things that we can be doing? Again, I think also understanding the sensitivity that we want to be mindful, not to pit one community against the other, but rather how are we all in this together? Uh, do we have some solutions that we've seen at the county level here in Santa Clara County as a blueprint for success moving forward? So I, there, there's a few suggestions that I have um, to your question. Um, one of them is actually there's a piece of national legislation called the No Hate Act. And it's something that uh, if people look up, it's something I hope that the, the 117th Congress will pass. One of the things it does is provides resources to the FBI and local law enforcement to document and track hate crimes. Because part of understanding what to do about the problem is knowing the scope of it and where it's happening. In addition, there, there's something else that we've done in our county that I, I think I'm particularly proud of. And I think other counties have, uh, have done things along these lines as well. But um, I remember there's an organization that grew out of my office called the National Association of Asian and Pacific, Asian American and Pacific Islander Prosecutors Association. And I, I was very proud that prosecutors in my office, Asian American prosecutors started this organization and it, it's grown exponentially. And there, there's chapters all over the country. And their mission was to be a bridge to the Asian American community and to uh, encourage more trust between law enforcement and the Asian American community to encourage individuals to become, who are Asian American, to become police officers, to become prosecutors, to become judges. And I think that's really important. Um, at one of the, at the first event that NAPIPA, that's the name of this group, had several years ago, I was lucky I was there with then assembly member Paul Fong. And one of the things that I talked about there is we talked about the internment of Japanese Americans uh, during World War II in this country. And that was carried out by a whole uh, law enforcement judiciary apparatus. Prosecutors, police officers, judges, all were involved in this as well as other citizens. And one of the questions I posited is, I wonder if 15% of the prosecutors in the Department of Justice or in that DA's office, I wonder if they were Asian American, if this would have happened. I wonder if more people would have stood up and stopped it. And so that's, one, that's something tangibly that, that I can do in terms of uh, making sure I hire prosecutors who reflect our community and I think other uh, DA's offices can do as well. Well, I can't but uh, help to notice that representation matters. Uh, in other words, your own personal experience uh, for that of the Jewish community and the uncanny parallels with respect to the anti-Semitism and the attacks um, we heard earlier, for example, the conversations in the state legislature uh, from legislators, um, specifically from the Jewish caucus, talking about the similarities and the experience of seeing metal detectors outside places of worship uh, and the type of things that we see here as well. It doesn't matter. Do you think representation still matters today? I, I, think, it, I think it absolutely does. I, I think it's not a surprise that during this, this pandemic, and the disruption that it's caused our country and particularly some of the leadership voices in our country which had been stoking division that we would see an increase in racial and ethnic attacks and of course we've documented a huge increase in hate incidents against asian americans there's been an enormous increase against jewish americans as well and 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 it goes and latinos and african americans it's not a surprise that these are all happening together and at the same time. And my, my hope, obviously, is that with, with a new administration uh, in Washington uh, and a real effort to try to, to bridge divides and to try to bring some more unity, that, that we'll see less of this. But, but I do think that representation uh, absolutely is important and matters. Uh, we're not yet in a colorblind society, M maybe someday, we, we will be, but we're not 
we're not there yet. And it's important for people to, to see, to hear, and to know that people who are just like them are representing them. It doesn't mean that only Jews can represent Jews or only Asians can represent Asians. It doesn't mean that, but it does sort of mean if you have a really diverse county, like we have in Santa Clara County, well, should the representatives also be diverse since that's what they're representing? And so um, that's, that's what I strive to do in terms of our hiring in the DA's office and in terms of uh, elected officials, obviously, um, you know, you're an example of, of someone who's, um, you know, risen up and done the hard work to, to be in a position to represent uh, your constituents. Well, I appreciate that acknowledgement. I just can't, again, help uh, but notice and reference, especially as right before this Facebook live chat, we were on the floor of the state legislature and heard bipartisan support for the resolution condemning the hate crimes towards the Asia Pacific Islander community. And in fact, one of the Republican legislators of Korean descent talked about how his own son was a victim recently of a hate crime and saw in the Korean publications a warning to those Koreans living in California, beware of your surroundings, that YouTube could be targeted or that of the Thai consulate in San Francisco and in California issuing a warning and a notice for those of Thai descent living in California. And it goes, if we sort of pause and think, wow, this is California. It's not reverse as if Americans are getting that type of notice when abroad or overseas, but rather in our own home country. And that's why I think it's uh, it causes significant pause for us to reflect and think, boy, what a, what are, we what are we thinking about with respect to our American and California values and that our society is so fragile and that we need to invest in these conversations and have dialogue amongst ourselves and with each other, not around each other, but with each other. And that's why I think this conversation is important because individuals in the community may be looking to our government representatives asking and demanding for action and accountability as well. And of course, it's not an easy answer to this but certainly one that is important to have dialogue around. Uh, and so I would assume that then moving forward, you'll continue to do the type of work in terms of the county of Santa Clara, but also at a statewide level. You've been very active at the statewide level, roaming the halls of the state capitol when appropriately to do so, uh, advancing this type of legislation to ensure that we have a safe community for everyone. I, I agree with that, Assembly Member. I think that you know at, at a county level, you know, we are looking collectively at hate crimes in our county. And when I say collectively, I mean law enforcement, public health, behavioral health, community-based organizations. We're, we're trying to look at ourselves to see what can we do to try to reduce hate crimes and foster more understanding, more respect amongst people from different ethnicities. That, that's absolutely um, essential and, and important to us. And I, you know, I'm, I, I believe we will be successful because we're really working at it. I don't, and I, I don't know that we're going to get to a, a point where we see no hate crimes, but we can definitely do things to reduce it. And I mean, I, I agree with you when you said, gosh, how disappointing as Americans that we have other countries issuing warnings to their citizens that it's dangerous here. It's just a sad day for our country when, when others, you know, are, uh, feel they have to do that. So I'm hopeful that with this renewed focus and attention and conversations like these, that we'll be able to reduce these kinds of incidents. Well, as you know, there are multiple stages of grief. I'm currently in the stage of anger, and I know so many community members feel the same way, uh, but they're hoping to channel their energy towards something productive. And while we are now allow for an opportunity for individuals to ask any questions or comments, um, I'll make a, a question to you, Attorney, District Attorney uh, Jeff Rosen, sorry, just the slip of the tongue here, uh, District Attorney Jeff Rosen, about one takeaway then, if you could think about one takeaway, one call to action for members of the community, if they're watching this, what can they do in their communities to take action, just not just simply being frustrated and feel a, a great sense of anguish, 
but what can they do? And as you're thinking about that one piece of advice on what community members can do, I also want to thank you and your office for uh, talking about this critical issue and make a public service announcement, which is that if you know of someone who has been affected by discrimination or hate crime, please contact the hate crimes office team in the county district attorney's office. Uh, again, that phone number is 408 792 2976. Again, 408 792 2976. Or feel free to get in contact with our office as well so that can we, make, we can make sure that uh, we get that addressed. So uh, then to our district attorney, uh, Jeff Rosen, what's that one piece of advice for that individual watching in horror of the type of hate crimes towards the Asian Pacific Islander community and frankly, towards anyone? What's that one piece of advice or guidance that you would suggest on actionable items that they can take themselves? What one suggestion that I have, uh, it's all right, you know, we're, we're in the midst of Lunar New Year celebrations. And uh, I, I think that for a people who are uh, Chinese, Vietnamese, Korean, what, that are observing this holiday or maybe observing other holidays throughout the year to uh, make an effort to uh, include some of their non-Asian neighbors in the celebration. And I'll, I'll just tell you what I, what I mean by that. So, right, there's different Jewish holidays that I celebrate. Uh, some are more inwardly focused, some are more sort of open. And so I, my wife and I make an effort when there's you know, Jewish holidays where we can you know, bring somebody some kind of you know, uh, treat that's related to that, some kind of food item that's related to that holiday to do that. I mean, who doesn't like, you know, whatever, like a, a cookie that's related to a holiday or, you know, a potato pancake or, or whatever it is like here, we're celebrating X and we just wanted to, to bring this over to you. Oh, someone is celebrating Lunar New Year. Oh, I'd like to bring you this. Okay. And, you know, I feel like it's a small tangible thing, but uh, I know that people's neighbors, I mean, people always responded positively when my wife and I have done these things. And, uh, and it makes us feel better. It makes us, you know, as we feel, you know, more, um, more at home, more welcome that we've shared this. So that would be one tangible thing that I, that I would um, suggest. I, I'm not trying to put the onus, you know, that it's, it's, the, it's the Asian's fault or the Jew's fault that this is happening. Not at all. But I just mean like, if you approach people with positive aspects of your heritage, most people are gonna respond positively back. And I think that's better for all of us. What I'm, what I'm hearing you say is breaking bread, uh, having dialogue with one another, uh, ensuring that especially as we are isolated right now uh, with Zoom and not able to have that normal human contact, of course, it's much easier to criticize or to throw out verbal assaults online or via text or Twitter. Uh, but when you look at someone face-to-face -face and have that human connection, uh, you see that we have much more in common than we have uh, disagreements upon. Uh, so it's one that uh, I'll look forward then to getting your invitation, uh, uh, District Attorney uh, Jeff Rosen, about- uh, what some Absolutely. Some <laughs> Absolutely, you will. Well, I know that this is just uh, a continued conversation. Uh, this is not the end. But as you can appreciate, uh, there's significant desire to figure out what can we do collectively. And I hope that if nothing else, that we're able to help inform our community about the work that we do and about the obligations that we have to hold us respectively accountable, but then also to best be empowered because it's also about community action. And I think we'll see uh, some significant opportunities for action in the coming weeks. But again, thank you very much for the opportunity. And I know that you'll make yourself readily available if anyone has any additional questions or concerns. Yes, absolutely, Assembly Member. It was a pleasure uh, to talk with you about this important subject. And I look forward to future uh, conversations about this and future actions that we can collectively take to make our community uh, safer, more peaceful for everyone. Great, thank you very much.